Hey there, guys. How's it going? Good to see you. Welcome to Breakfast All Day. Christy and Alonzo here doing something a little different. Um, the Batman is coming out next week, as you may have heard, starring Robert Pattinson. Yet another new Batman. But it got us thinking about all of the really inspired choices he has made over the years. And I know we allude to this all the time when he works with David Cronenberg or Claire Denis or the Safties. Like, wow. He chooses really well, but like, let's take a minute and like sit in this and ponder the brilliance and the breadth of Robert Pattinson. It's interesting. I think Pattinson and Kristen Stewart have both like used that franchise, whatever your feelings about it were, as a platform. And then weirdly enough, the Fifty Shades movies, which are based on books that were originally <laughs> fan fiction of Twilight, those two actors, I think, have also gone off to do really interesting stuff once they once their their duties were completed. For sure. And looking back at you know the first Twilight came out in two thousand eight, and it made him this heartthrob and this international superstar. You know his ability to sparkle in the sunlight was unparalleled. Um, but I don't know that we knew from that performance what he had in him, what depth and what daring he had in him. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I don't think there's anything inherently in, I mean, maybe as they move along, but for the most part, you, you, that, there's nothing in those that scream, oh, yes, you want to see this guy work with the world's most interesting, you know, art house directors, <laughs> but also nothing that, that, that would make you think you wouldn't, you know, but he, yeah. it, it does become a thing where like, all right, now you're, you're famous, but here's the hard part. Are you good? Yeah. Well, there's a thing that's in Edward inherently that makes him intriguing to Bella, and that is that he's dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. And so when, when I was going back and looking through his filmography and picking some movies for this segment, like there's a, a, a through line, there's something dangerous about him in all of them, right? So mm -hmm. the, the first really, really interesting movie he makes after the Twilight franchise is Cosmopolis. Yes. With, with David Cronenberg, which is so funny. I wrote this down on my list and then I went back and I watched our old What the Flick review in it, of it. And I did not like this movie at all. But like, <laughs> but he's in a limo the whole time. Who is he? He's in a limo. Yes, he's, he's, a, he's a, a wealthy man of mystery. And he pretty much spends the entire movie in a car, which, you know, ask Tom Hardy, that's a hard thing to do and make it interesting. <laughs> um, but, you know, there, there's like riots going on outside. It's very much a movie about like, you know, wealth inequality and, you know, the, the one, the, the 0.1%. And, uh, uh, you know, he has, he's a character who is sort of inherently unlikable, but who Pattinson has to make interesting and who we want to follow through this story and not just hope that the rioters get him. Right. It'd be easy to hate him, yeah. but he brings enough complexity to it that we, uh, we hold on for a while. And then one of the ones that you picked, Alonzo, is Lost City of Z, James yeah. Gray's Lost City of Z in 2016. Uh, a movie that I didn't care for, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I did remember thinking, oh, Pattinson is really impressing me here because he is taking this sort of like grizzled, you know, it's very much the kind of character actor piece that like, I don't know, um, you know, Walter Houston would have played back in the day, like in Treasure Sierra Madre, you know, the sort of the, the grizzled experienced guide. And Pattinson is, you know, a strikingly handsome gentleman. And most of his movies, I think, are designed to make him that way. Even like, I think the first time I, he registered for me on screen was in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, because he's just one of those characters that has to be super magnetic and then die and then his death has to mean something and so for him to play this role where he's like weathered and 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 kind of cynical and whatever um you know it's like oh okay so he does want to be a character actor he's not just here to be like a matinee idol and that for me was the takeaway for the whole movie like that's the one thing about that film that i remember and then he goes full bore into that with good time Yes. Right. So he worked with the Safties in Good Time. It's like this all night nightmarish odyssey through Queens as he is trying to get his brother, played by Benny Safdie, out of jail. And he is dangerous, but also like charismatic as hell when he needs to be. When yes. he, he figures out who he needs to be in each situation to move on to the next step. But he's constantly like, taking a step or two back like he, he accomplishes something but then he has to go get this thing like he's like slogging through molasses but whatever <laughs> happens he is like 
unpredictable and volatile and sexy and grimy and funny. Yeah. yeah there's a, there's a, like you could just smell the desperation and the flop <laughs> sweat on this guy, but at the same time, he has that sort of hustler con artist ability to, like you said, adapt to whatever the person he's with needs to hear, needs him to be. And so it is, it's a, it's a tour de force performance because he's, you're watching an actor play somebody who you are watching act in his day-to-day -day life, mm. uh, in the way that he, he he interacts with other people, and it's 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 riveting. Next up, this is one I know you like a lot. It is High Life from Claire yeah. Denis. Yes, uh, you know I think Claire Denis is always asking for very specific things from her from her actors, and it's usually you know less. <laughs> you know she she really is 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 wanting very these kind of minimal. You know like Dave's a big fan of hers, and he often will compare her stuff to to Robert Bresson, who was like adamant about his performers doing as little as possible and being as as you know unshowy as possible and so yeah i think pattinson in high life is it's a very dialed down performance and it's completely in keeping with the way the rest of the movie is operating and that it, it has this sort of just kind of grim you know sci-fi nihilism to the whole thing right and what's interesting is that he's it's like a jail. It's like criminals are all in like it's like space jail. Yeah. It's already it's art house space jail. Right. And he's a murderer, but he's this gentle soul with this daughter. And so you get to see a softer side of him than you see in the other interesting rules he's chosen where he has to be dangerous. Like he's yeah. inherently dangerous, but also tender. And that's a fascinating contradiction. Oh, for sure. So there's that. And then also the same year, 2019, he does the lighthouse. <laughs> 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 Which is the totally other end of the spectrum in terms of aesthetics and tone and pacing. Yeah. And he's funny, you know, yes. like that's, let, I think he doesn't get enough credit for that. Like he's really funny in that movie, which is just so off-putting and like constantly daring you to just keep going with this utterly grim, like you could just, that's one of those movies you can smell, you know, <laughs> right. but he's captain, he and Willem Dafoe like play off each other so well and they're so captivating, but there, there is such a grim sense of humor to it all that he's completely on the right way with Right. And he gets like the language is really dense and specific and he gets that and like he gets yeah. the look of it and just he seems totally down for like delving into the insanity, like the spiral into insanity that they both undergo. So that's yeah. a lot of fun. And you buy and him as a 19th century, you know, whatever the hell he is. <laughs> right. Which is amazing, given that he's like this contemporary heartthrob for sure. Yes. And then finally, I'm going to pick um, The Devil All the Time, mm. which is on Netflix from 2020. He comes in, it's a giant ensemble, big Tom Holland's in it, big cast. And um, he is this traveling preacher, bullshit artist. And his his accent's kind of wonky because you can tell he's like faking who he is wherever he has to be. And uh, it's such a weird and showy performance. And the voice he's doing is like kind of kind of reedy and kind of Southern. And But then it gets really intense and Southern. And he... It is so specific and so singular that it became a meme <laughs> of him saying delusions. <laughs> and again, like a great example of him just going for it, right? right? Just being willing to strip away all that is inherently appealing about himself and just go for the weirdness of it. Yeah, I, I think, you know, we're, th th this is an ongoing pattern, but I think it, it's certainly in the last couple of decades, we've really seen these actors that the industry wants to sort of pigeonhole as heartthrobs who have to sort of just break away from that as much as possible and not necessarily like ugly themselves up or cover themselves in latex, but definitely take on these really sort of seedy, you know, roles. I mean, like, uh, I think Colin Farrell is a great example of that. Yeah. Like he's a guy who Hollywood kept trying to pitch you in a certain way and it wasn't landing. And then he's like, you know what? I, I got this. And he's like, I'm going to go make a Neil Jordan movie now. You know, I'm going to be in, in Bruges and it's going to be a totally different thing. I'm um, going to go and, do the lobster and put exactly. on weight for it. Yes. So like, I think Patton's and is very shrewdly is like he's like yeah. i can either be a joke or i can like be an actor by like taking all these sort of degree of difficulty 10 roles that, that i can get and that i can use my cloud to help get these movies made in the first place because i have this box office record now yeah. and give that to the claire denis and the david cronenbergs of the world who are going to put me in things that are challenging and different and 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 sort of upend the notion of what people think i'm supposed to be 
Totally. And he's a total cinephile and that shows in, in his, his taste. He has excellent taste. Um, so the Batman comes out next week. Katie and I are going to have a review on Monday of next week. Um, and then we're also next week going to do a look at all the Batmans. Who's the best Batman? So similar Ooh. to this, we're going to go back and look at it. You, you and I, Alonzo, we're going to ponder Batman. So start okay. thinking, you can't choose Adam West. Tempting what? as it might be. <laughs> Then nah, I you can, of course. You can, you can. <laughs> um, so we'll do that next week too. We'll have links below to the movies we have reviewed here that we talked about that Robert Pattinson was in. Please let us know what you have loved from him. What are you, his best roles in your eyes? We would love to hear that. Chime You're in a closet the Bellamy fan. This is a safe space. <laughs> We're all friends here. So uh, chime in in the comments below and uh, thanks very much. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, click the bell, follow us at BeFast All Day on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash BeFast All Day. We're doing TV recaps. Uh, in March, we're going to be celebrating the 100th anniversary of the uh, silent horror classic Nosferatu, and lots of other fun stuff that you can only get if you're a subscriber. So become one today. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.